Can I have your attention, please? You're very welcome to the premises of the European Commission. My name is Pierce O'Donoghue. I'm with that part of the European Commission called DG Connect. I'm with my colleague and co-host, Natalia Aristumunio, who is from the uh, IT, that department of the Commission called Digit. Uh, and we're very uh, pleased to welcome you here. Um, I think it's a mark of your commitment that despite the fact that, as usual, open source has brought the heads of government to Brussels and a huge protest movement to Brussels. It just shows you how many people are motivated and also very, very highly opinionated about open source. So you've run the gauntlet through the security and the, the tractors to get here. Unfortunately, some of our attendees will have been delayed due to the blockages in transport routing, etc. But we do need to get going in what is a very busy day. But we uh, have a, a keynote uh, and we want uh, him to have the, the, the 15 minutes that we promised to him. So without further ado, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Alexandre Lapolsky, uh, Zapolsky, excuse me, uh, from Ling Agora, who is going to give us his views on this important subject. Please, Alexandre. So it's of course, very impressive to be in front of uh, so many peers today. Uh, thank you uh, to the Commission to uh, give me this great opportunity to um, give some word about uh, my vision about open source software. And, uh, and it's a great honor to be uh, here today uh, with all of you. So I'm Alexandre Zapolsky. I'm president of company Linagora. Linagora is one of the European leading company in open source. I funded the company in 2000, so we are, like, when you are speaking, uh, Natalia, about sustainability, you can, I mean, you have absolutely a concrete living example of companies that exist since one quarter of century, and uh, believe me, some of our customers that we, we start to work with 20 years ago, uh, they also can uh, explain to anyone that we are able to support and, uh, uh, and, and to deliver open source software for them since that, that, that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, so we do open source software. So we have a full range of open source software. Uh, one of our main software is, is called Twek, um, Twek Workplace, which is um, uh, like a, a full solution, alternative solution to Microsoft 365. So there is no more reason to use any more Microsoft Teams or Microsoft 365. I take the opportunity to have the, the mic here to, to pass this message. And it's great to speak about digital autonomy, but I mean, we can act by example. And I think that European Commission should act by uh, example, which is the case in some domain. So I want to mention that um, we work with the European Commission, especially on, on uh, doing uh, absolutely amazing solution to do any uh, transcriptions of any meetings. So I don't know if you know that, but European Commission has 1,100 meeting rooms such as this one, 1,100. So it's like absolutely um, a factory of, of doing meeting, uh, European Commission. And all this... Uh, uh, intelligence, collective intelligence, that uh, is created when uh, they have this uh, this meeting. Most of the time, it's it's lost. I mean, sooner or later after these meetings, and so the idea of the European Commission is to have transcription of all of of their meetings, to have automatic sum up of these meetings, and of course to put all this data into a, a, a common data lake, common uh, data space and with free and open source LLM to be able to have your own European Commission GPT, let's say that like that, and to don't trust anymore this collective uh, intelligence. So it's true that European Commission, Commission act and, and, and move forward, and I want absolutely to underline that. That's the same with the European Parliament. European Parliament has decided to use LinShare, which is one of our solutions um, that do uh, uh, secure file sharing and so they could use like so many other administration in Europe, I don't know, solutions such as Dropbox and things like that, but they have made the choice of, of one European solution, which is uh, hosted, by the way, in the uh, European cloud uh, through uh, OVH and, and uh, it works and, and, and they like to use it. So, 
But after more than two decades on, the, on this market, let's be honest, we are still a small uh, player. I mean, if you compare us and any other European leaders that you have in this room with Microsoft, I mean, there is nothing to compare. I mean, today, you know that, that, that week uh, Microsoft reached 3,000 billion value on the market, which is more than all the stock exchange in France. That's just crazy. These big tech are absolutely massive and huge tech companies. And I mean, we in Europe, we have contributed a lot to that. Uh, we take money from taxpayers from Europe to finance this software company uh, that so for some of them, they don't pay tax in Europe, by the way, which is just crazy uh, point if you uh, uh, think about it. And, and we don't develop our uh, digital sovereignty. So there are some big challenges to resolve uh, in front of us, and I would like to share some, uh, some view on that. First, we need to have the support of politicians. I mean, without politicians, nothing will move in Europe. And I want to uh, um, underline, for example, that now we, have, we are absolutely a lucky country in France. We have this amazing president that uh, you know, Emmanuel Macron. And President Macron decided in June this year, last year in 2023, to say something very simple. We love open source. And I want to be more precise, is, as I did in his speech, French government support open source. When a president of Republic says something like that, I can assure you that all the administration behind him think differently. And we need more leaders in Europe, and also, I mean, we have a president of Europe, so uh, we need also to have at the European level more leaders that they, they take the leadership and they assume that Europe needs open source and that Europe supports open source. It should not be only something from the administration. I, we all appreciate the work of the DG Connect and the Digit, and, and we know that you try to, to push and to move forward. But first, we need to, have, we need to, to push our politicians to take the lead on these uh, issues. And it's a political issue. I, I, I will not have the, the time to go inside that, but you know that the code is low, and, and it's absolutely um, a question of society, which kind of software we want to use. Second point, we need to um, empower people that are in charge of open source software in all of our administrations. So here in uh, European Commission, you have uh, Guy uh, Ilenium, who is in charge of open source. Uh, in France, we have Bastien Guéry. These people deserve to have more power, more leadership, uh, more, uh, I mean, budgets to implement their strategy and their vision for our uh, for these uh, organizations, um, and but to to have more power is also to have a clear strategy. And let's be honest, I do think that we have a lack of clear strategy in each of our country, and we have a lack of strategy. Sorry <coughs> to tell that in front of the DG Connect, a lack of European industrial strategy for open source, and we need to work on that. Um, according to me, so one of the main issues in terms of strategy should be to know what kind of open source we want. Do we want an open source only based on developers, hackers? It has been uh, during some years the main strategy of the European Union. Do we want an open source bring by the big international companies, when I see that one of the main providers for government are Accenture or McKinsey or this consulting firm from uh, US, sometimes I, I, I mean, I fell from my chair and I don't understand what we are doing collectively. Um, so my point of view is that there are in Europe absolutely good companies that they do true open source software. And I make a difference between what we call commercial open source and true free and open source software. There are companies that they are committed to develop a sustainable digital, um, that they have a vision for the future for uh, digital in Europe. And we, we need to be more clear on what kind of open source European Commission and European Union 
want and want to support. And uh, so for that, one of my suggestions should be to set up, like it has been done by uh, the European Commission through Mr. Chastanet, he is the head of uh, this cloud alliance, and he has organized a, a full dialogue between cloud providers in Europe, and they work very hard to define, I mean, some labels and some rules about how to promote European cloud providers. So we need to do that in open source. So I think this, this day could be the, the first day of a new initiative developed by the European Commission to set up a group of experts, and we can help the European Commission to define what should be the right strategy for the European Commission. Because at the end of the day, we need to be clear, when open source is commercial, it means proprietary, it's no more open source. When a part of the software is proprietary, all the software become proprietary. We should not jump into this trap, this commercial and marketing trap, from providers. And we should believe and support more the, tr the, 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 what we call the, the good tech players, the good tech companies that support the true free and open source software. You mentioned it. We, I, I do think also that we need to, to scale absolutely more faster, uh, more faster, yeah, double fast, more faster, <laughs> and we should put more money uh, on, on the table. You're right, NGI is absolutely a, a great initiative. It works. But you also said it, it's, let's say, just 25 million euros. Just 25 million euros. It's nothing compared to the size of Europe. It's nothing compared to the issues that we have in front of us. We want to develop this digital sovereignty in Europe. Let's do that. But we need for that, I mean, to multiplicate it by 10, maybe by 50, all the public money that we put to support the, the development of uh, our ecosystem. So we need to move faster and we need to put more money. But I mean, more money by subvention is a, is a good thing. But what we need more than that is public tender. As always, I mean, direct command, true customers are always better than just subvention. Both are relevant. We need to finance innovation, R&D, just I would like to share you an example with that. We received uh, 10 years ago public funding from the French government through uh, Investissement d'Avenir, that's what the name of this program. And we decided to invest massively in a solution called GEMS. GEMS belong to the Apache Foundation and the aim of GEMS is to provide a new generation of email server. So every uh, mail that you know are based on a protocol called IMAP. And so the international organization from, from uh, web, like IETF and W3C, thought that we need to have a new protocol to manage email at the uh, uh, edge of uh, uh, cloud and, and mobile and so on. And so they decided to create a new norm called JMAP. And the Apache Foundation, through this GEMS project, said, OK, we are going to build the one of the uh, mail uh, server that is going to implement this GMAP. So we started to invest in that, and guess what? During 10 years, we never get any customer. The solution was not mature, but after to invest so much, the solution became mature. And Estonian government, uh, for example, has decided to use GEMS to build their own digital sovereign email solution for all the Estonian citizens. By the way, without the support of Linagora, we are in front of true commons. So anyone can use these gems. We are the leader of the community. But I mean, it's a true free and open source software, a true digital commons. And now it's India that considers to use uh, gems and a lot of administration in France and also in Germany, everywhere. So it's not true that we can create innovation that they will scale at the international level, at the worldwide level without investment and without time. But we absolutely need to act and to put always the first step and to start. When you saw the decision about uh, the European data health, uh, you know that maybe uh, in France you saw that, that uh, France uh, body for regulation of data privacy has accepted that 
the European uh, data health will be, uh, will be based on Microsoft. And in their decision, so they said, okay, there is no mature cloud uh, solution today able to do as, as good as uh, Microsoft Azure. And they expressed their regret and they said, if in France we, have started, we, we started to invest three years ago on the national data, uh, health data hub, now we will have been ready uh, with, uh, I mean, European industrial solution. And it's always this question that we are always following the train and we are always missing the train. So we need to stop to complain and we need just to act. So put more money, please, on the table. Uh, because here you have absolutely a strong ecosystem that is able to, um, to, uh, to uh, I mean, to develop any solution that European needs uh, to develop its digital sovereignty. So there is absolutely uh, no uh, fatality. It's not written nowhere that Europe will always use US software. In five years, 10 years, 20 years, we can absolutely develop our own digital sovereignty. It's just a question of us, it's just a question of our decision, and it's just a question to act. So all together, Let's, be, let's build our third digital way. Thank you. Alexandre, thank you very much. Thank you for the vision, but also thank you for the very straight talking, the straight messages, some of them addressed to us, none of them particularly comfortable, but that's what this discussion is about. Uh, and I'm not going to try and give you uh, answers to everything, those challenges, or try to have the last word. I will just say one thing, while not in any way distracting or contradicting what you have said, is that we did have to make a conscious choice in so far as we can inflect on policies. <clears throat> because we've been trying, probably as long as you have been in business, to have software and open source put at the front of our development. And the top-down approach hasn't been working. So that often now what we do is, through NGI, the bottom-up, but also through our funding, and also through incremental steps of making open source critical to and central to everything we do. All framework program research projects must now deliver the results in open source. When we introduce things like simple, it will be an open source. So we are trying to contribute to a critical mass. But of course, I do hear your message, and I'm not going to contradict you about the, the top-down approach. Uh, we should have more heads of government, um, uh, and, and of course, more administrators, civil servants, bureaucrats, whatever you want to call us, uh, who, who see that it works and, and feeding that into our political masters so that they too will give that strategic support that you've talked about. It's what we're here for. So, um, so, so thank you for the very clear messages to us uh, and, and we take those on the chin. Now, um, and also, by the way, thank you for being perfectly on time despite the delays. Uh, so that was great. We're going to move straight on to our first panel. As I said, we have four important subjects over the day. Our first um, panel uh, is on open source for cybersecurity. And I'm going to invite our chair for that session, Valentina Casola, uh, to come and to, I, don't know, I think you're going to sit here, um, uh, Valentina. I think that was the idea. Uh, and you will introduce your panelists, so we'll get out of your way. Thank you all for your attention. Thanks for being here. Uh, and I look forward to a great day. Thank you.